there, it's Polly here. Yay! Mm -hmm. mm. Oh boy, in about 43 degrees heat. Right, so a while ago I did a review of Kings of War Historical. So that was a historical set based upon a fantasy rule set, which I had in fact not yet seen. So I was interested enough to actually get hold of Kings of War. Right. This is a miniatures game designed for fantasy miniatures. It very specifically hooks in to a, a range of fantasy miniatures done by Mantic Games. Um, it looks like its original idea was to sort of be miniature producer agnostic. However, this is very clearly designed to match in with Mantic Games range and only that range so it has kind of done a warhammer on us there it has now definitely switched to being the um <laughs> the, the sales arm of a miniatures company which is odd because it seems to have been a bit of a rebellion against um warhammer um which is a game that is problematic in so many ways however a weird thing is that it uses some kind of strange tropes that i've seen in warhammer and which you don't seem to find in historical games. Now, this is a beautifully produced set of rules. You can see it's huge, but most of this is actually army lists um, for all of these different nations, um, two thirds of it, and obviously lavishly photograph illustrated with Mantic miniatures. Um, but the rules are, um, they're certainly popular, they're very clear, they're very, very well expressed, it's very easy to learn how to play this game, you're not scratching your head and desperately looking at examples trying to figure out what the smeg they're talking about. Um, movement is very, very clear. Um, when you contact units, they square up, they're very, very clear about look just jiggle things around a little bit to give everyone space we're not that interested in you know whether this moves someone an extra few millimeters or whatever we want things to be just clear who's contacting who who's doing what so there's no ambiguities so you're welcome to just you know jiggle things sideways and left and up and down a bit just to make things clear and so okay so this seems to be a major um, thing with them so an army has units uh, these tend to be multiples of five troops. So they tend to be like five across is like a little troop of ordinary guys. Um, five across but two deep is like a slightly larger unit. Then you can get groups that are like um, ten across and two deep, an even larger unit. And then you get like legions and hordes, which are you know, ten across but about four deep. So a huge block of troops a bit unwieldy to move but um, you know they've got staying power each troop type in the army list will have um, it's a particular type of unit laid out and it will tell you how many attack dice that unit rolls in combat it will give you these are d6 that you roll so it will roll more dice depending on the size of the unit there's an attack value that's the number or higher on a d6 that you're going to have to score on each of these dice to get a hit. And in kind of the tradition of the Warhammery thing, once you've done all those hits, you then pick up all the ones that are hit and you roll those again and you've got to beat the armor or protective value of the target. They've got a defense number and now you've got to roll that higher. So if you needed four, fives or sixes to hit, You've got, you know, 10 guys or 10 dice rolling. Okay, you get five hits. All right, and this guy's got a defense of five or six. All right, now I've got to roll fives or sixes. All right, you know, I've got three fives. All right, I've got three hits. Um, all right, that's how the damage is fought and scored. Now, because it's fantasy, they've got different types of units. There's standard infantry, there's kind of large or monstrous infantry so you know your trolls your ogres there's something bigger models so instead of like five across there'll be three you also get kind of beer moths because they've got dragons and giants and um, some quite impressive models that look great um 
you can actually use other people's models i would kind of recommend them but um um and you've got war engines and all kinds of other interesting things and monsters and all. and again beautiful illustrations of all this jazz um so when you move fairly simple of course you can pivot yourself in any damn full way you want and then move some troops can um pivot themselves um start and beginning and middle of moves and so on because they're nimble and that's where we get into the interesting thing those rules that i gave you were the basics however there are lots and lots of exceptions special powers effectively that different troops get and so units can be nimble which means that they can um turn more often as they move um they can be ones that move very quickly through rough terrain uh they can be ones that um get a um an extra bonus of ferocious charge as they um, charge um etc tons and tons and tons of kind of additional powers that you can get there are also individual figures which are um leaders or characters and these have dice they can attach themselves onto units and add their attack dice and so on to the unit and some of these have powers you can buy magical equipment some of your units can be given magical equipment and obviously individual guys can be given magical equipment so yes i can have a hero which adds like three dice to any unit that he attaches himself onto but i can give him a magic sword and his three dice um yeah they're gonna like um get a plus two or three bonus for carving through someone's armor and so on because it's a mighty magic sword you know etc so you know all this sort of stuff there's also magic you can have um individual characters that are magic users who cast magic spells there's a substantial list of magic spells magic some of it is directly damaging like fireball lightning bolt kind of stuff that directly attacks a unit others um slow down units mire down movement some are direct morale attacks etc units are rated essentially for um their morale is usually split into two numbers one is at which they become demoralized and the other one is which they rout when you have to do a morale check which is essentially whenever you take casualties um if you roll the higher of the two numbers that's a rout rather than um a demoralization demoralized troops of course are more vulnerable and can't do things etc um, but can be rallied back again by leaders and leadership is another characteristic you know characters and some of them can be you know really charismatic and really good at doing that um so um yeah so undead don't have a demoralization so they don't have the lower of the two numbers the high one they still have so it's actually they kind of grind forward um never demoralizing however undead have some other problems they tend to be slower moving um you can hustle some units along if there's no other units within engagement range you can kind of hustle forward at double movement speed because you know you're not locking shields and tramping along you can kind of move it skeleton and zombie hordes and things like that they have a tag on them saying they shamble so it's like no you don't get to move at the double with these guys <laughs> they always move forward at kind of a, a lumbery walk because that's what they are but you know on the other hand um <laughs> on the other hand they're free and you don't have to feed them um so yeah look um simple mechanisms as i said very warhammerish um fistful of dice um you get a massive bonus if you manage to hit someone in the flank or rear so that's what you're looking for you're looking for the flank and rear attacks you're looking to sort of pin people um on the front and somehow turn the flanks and that's where you get the huge bonuses which is you know perfectly fair all right that's the tactical problem that they are posing um um either busting hole through the center of the line and then having follow through guys to sort of flood round and start rolling someone up or rolling someone up from the outside uh it's not quite um warhammer often he who has the biggest most expensive model wins this one no it's way more balanced than that you have to pay the points system that they've got means if something has abilities you are paying for it um so a huge mass of um goblins um they're nowhere as good as like massive huge troll guys in mighty armor with magic swords and yaddy yaddy squee but on the other hand um <laughs> those massively armored and magical get up people um you can face them with an awful lot of goblins uh, you know he's got a 300 point unit and <laughs> 
you've got 650 point ones all right i'll pin him on the front and i'm going to curl around the flanks um so um yeah obviously there's a ton of wacky equipment now as you start getting into the uh, army lists they've each got their own shticks um goblins um are gadgeteers <laughs> for some reason goblins have kind of like a um a more beast which is sort of like a giant mastiffy thing that they can ride around on but they their units can have basically more beasts in cages which give them a one shot bonus in a charge um and they've got a rather f <laughs> they've got a catapult that flings caged beasts and you can use that to try and like restock units uh, whatever uh but you've got you know crazy abyssal dwarves and mighty kingdoms and undead realms and elves and forces of nature and abyssal hordes and all this sort of stuff so you know there's a lot of different color to choose from here so you know these are all the positives of the game um colorful armies that have definite character that really make them pop from each other well served by an excellent range of miniatures simple and clear rules they're very clear they're very easy to teach there's no ambiguities they're incredibly well illustrated there is a siege set of rules in here as well um which are you know quite simple they're just an extension of the normal rules that's nice to see um there's a number of different scenario generators in here so you're not just doing like a meeting engagement um they've got some nice scenarios that um will kind of test you for you know attack defense ambushes um looting expeditions all kinds of things so you know these are all the positives of the rules the drawback however is kind of crazy as I mentioned in my review of the historical ones, this uses a you go, I go system. All right. But whereas a lot of older war games, you know, WIG Ancient Sun did that, if you move in to attack someone, they're fighting back. If I charge you with my lances, you know, if I charge your pikes with my lances, then. I've got to kind of figure, well, am I, is it worth it? Because those lances can do damage. Not in this thing, partner. No sorry. Um, when it is your turn, you do all of your movement. You do all of your firing. And any of your guys that crashed into someone and charged, you then just roll for damage on the people that you charged. They don't fight back. You just do whatever damage. Um did he then like break and run did the morale tests make his units disappear if not during his turn he gets to fight back but there's no damage traded there's no real risk except the fact that if you don't break him then you get to stump him. um so that you go i go thing uh i have to say it bugs me extremely um uh, it's it's a strange choice i'm not sure why they did it um except that i have seen other fancy rules that do it and perhaps this is what their audience expects um this is what a fantasy miniatures game trained audience or rather a game audience trained in warhammer style fantasy they're perfectly fine with this whereas historical gamers are like he doesn't get to hit back so if I set my thing up right, but basically he who charges his entire line home first gets a really substantial bonus. Um, so, you know, that's weird. Now, look, obviously these games work. It's got a huge number of adherents and um, they're popular. So obviously, obviously the game functions in that you go, I go combat. Um, I guess groups actually like withstand the the damage and uh, so you know off they go and you get your fight in and uh, there's you can see the tactical um, problems that you're being asked to solve in there are you know protect your flanks um, make sure that you've got um, leaders running up and down who can repair units that are starting to get demoralized um, maybe you even want some characters running around who are quite good at fighting other characters so because you can actually go you know mano a mano and then uh, tackle each other um so you know 
the game is in there. It's obviously... Um, uh, and it's a colourful game. So, prose, simple and clear and robust rules, well illustrated. I think it's a relatively argument-free system is what they've tried to set this up so that um, their examples and that thing where they're very clear about being specific about who's moving to what and we can nudge everything a little bit to make sure that there's clarity of who's attaching what and they're not worried about one millimeter or slight overlaps or corner to corner touch you know they're sort of these things are all handled so you get a very clear game you could teach it to a kid literally just rack out the troops and you can just teach it to a kid and he would be fascinated and playing it's incredibly colourful. Um, the different armies and so on are going to be fun. Uh, you know, you're going to have a great time painting this stuff and having the time of your life doing this. But um, the con is that strange damage system where you, they don't hit back. They hit back in their turn, if they're still there. Um, so, you know, that might mean that just feels too weird for you. And... Um, I wouldn't fault you. It feels a little weird to me. Uh, I have to say, it does feel a bit weird to me. I, I gave this game a shot, and it's like, yeah, you know, I could see it's fun, but it's also like, um, yeah, that 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 does feel weird to like an old ancients or um, you know, Napoleonic player. However, as far as fancy rules go, these are pretty damn good for mass battles. Um, Mantic miniatures actually are. Um, compared to Warhammer miniatures are real cheap. Uh, the quality is good. Um, they're very uh, characterful without the ridiculous over-sculpting of um, Warhammer miniatures. But online and places like Etsy and so on, there are a lot of makers who make their own Warhammer adjacent miniatures, which will also work for this. And if you've got a um, printer of your own, obviously the SDR files and so on for this sort of stuff is downloadable. I don't have one, um, but uh, and um, plus I like lead, goddammit. I like the heft of something going bum, 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 on the battlefield. Anyway, look, Kings of War, um, beautifully produced, an excellent game, clear. Uh, you do get a fun game out of it. Like, don't don't get too put off by that Hugo Mygo thing. Uh, like like I said, I played it and it was fun. Um, you know, giggingly good fun as you send your giant in to stomp the um, stomp stomp the goblins, but the goblins. You know, <laughs> zoom, zoom overhead with a, a glider dropping bombs on him and um, demoralized him so that uh, a whole bunch of um, um, guys release war beasts and bite his ankles. It's like, yes, that was, that was great fun. Um, so, yeah, look, a good game. Um, and uh, probably a worthy investment if you're looking at bringing particularly younger players into playing games. Because remember, you know. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, for fantasy that, that's the entry point yeah your first you, your first few games of fantasy are free son but hey have you ever tried looking at war of the spanish succession <laughs> anyway if you like the reviews by all means uh like subscribe and all that kind of cool jazz uh and i will see you guys anon cheers